Back in 2014, activist hedge fund Starboard Value made a successful bid to oust the board at Darden Restaurants, a company that owns multiple restaurant chains in the U.S., including a beloved Italian restaurant called Olive Garden. If you live outside of the U.S., you might not be familiar with this cultural treasure. It's a great place to get all-you-can-eat breadsticks and mediocre pasta at reasonable prices. As part of its takeover bid, Starboard put together a now-famous 300-slide presentation that, among other things, provided recommendations for how many breadsticks should be delivered to a customer's table at one time. In this video, I'm going to take one of the slides from this presentation and show you exactly how to take boring, unprofessional slides and turn them into slides that are clear, insightful, and engaging. I'll walk through each step of the redesign, explaining the logic behind each choice and why it matters for your audience. Plus, I'll provide you with some great PowerPoint tips along the way to help you build your slides a whole lot faster. All that and more, coming up. Hi everyone, Paul here from the Analyst Academy, where we teach people advanced PowerPoint and presentation building skills like what you might find at a top consulting firm. You can learn more about the courses we have for individuals and for teams over at theanalystacademy.com. We're also on YouTube, Instagram, and LinkedIn, so make sure you stay connected. The slide we'll be using today is from page 104 of the presentation, Transforming Darden Restaurants, which I'll link to below. All right, here we go. As you can tell, the slide is all about breadsticks and how Olive Garden's lack of training and discipline are leading to reduced profitability and a poor guest experience. The first thing that strikes me about this slide is just how much text there is. Now, that's not inherently bad. A common feature of slides in consulting, strategy, or finance is that they contain a lot of information that needs to be digested by the audience all at once. What's difficult about these types of slides is that they can overwhelm the audience, especially if it's delivered live where the audience has to read all the information on the slide, listen to the speaker, and potentially think of a response. Even for a smart person, it's a lot to ask. So your job as slide creator is to make it as easy as possible for the audience to understand your message by limiting distractions, drawing attention to the important parts of the slide, and guiding your audience visually. When you look at this slide, which parts of the slide are distracting? And are they important to the slide's message? For me, it was these dark blue boxes. The one down at the bottom here, but then also the labels for this table. The box at the bottom says, Olive Garden is famous for its unlimited breadsticks, but poor execution around this signature item, we believe both increased cost and hurt the guest experience. To me, this is a pretty important takeaway from this slide. So I'm gonna leave that one there for now. But then how about these boxes right here? Do they need to stick out so much? I need them to support the information in the table, but I don't think they should command so much attention. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove this attention grabbing blue color. And I'll do that by holding the control key as I select all the objects or the command key if you're using a Mac, then using my ribbon shortcuts to change the shape fill and the font. So I'll hit Alt to access the commands in the ribbon then H for home, then SF for shape fill, and then N for no fill. And then obviously this text can't be white, so I'll follow the same process to get to the home tab, then hit FC for font color, and choose this blue color down here. Another thing on the slide that I think is unnecessarily distracting is the picture of breadsticks down here. The rule with pictures on a slide is you wanna make sure it's contributing to the message in some way and not just there for good looks. This one could probably go either way because on the one hand, I think it's good to be able to visualize the topic, but on the other hand, we all know what a breadstick looks like and this isn't providing any new information. Not to mention, I don't think it fits in cleanly on the slide. It just sort of sits down at the bottom here and isn't aligned with anything. So I'm just gonna delete it. Now let's talk about this background for a little bit. The general rule for backgrounds is if you notice it, you need to change it. And this one I noticed right away. Maybe it's just me, but it's incredibly distracting and almost looks a little unprofessional, especially when the text is also blue. Plus there's also a contrast effect where the text on the top right gets more attention because there's a stronger contrast with the white background, whereas the text on the bottom left blends in just slightly more against the similar blue background. It's minor, but it's noticeable. So to delete it, I'm just gonna right click on the slide and go to format background, select solid fill, then choose white down here. Now, I know what you might be thinking, this slide is starting to look a little plain. But remember, the first step here is to remove distractions that aren't important to the slide's message. So that's what we've done. Now we're gonna put more emphasis on the important parts. And this is where it starts to get a little bit more interesting. 
Generally speaking, the most important part of any slide is the title. People like to look there first, so you want to make sure your title attracts attention and provides valuable information. On this slide, however, this box down here is a little more attention grabbing, so the path for the audience isn't quite as clear. Should they look at the title first, or the subtitle, or this box? We want to remove the complexity and make it as easy as possible for the audience to know where to look first, then second, then third. The title of the slide says, Breadsticks, Just One Example of Food Waste, which is short, but provides a good idea for what the slide is all about. Then here we have this subtitle. As just one example, we believe lapse discipline around Darden's renowned unlimited salad and breadsticks offering has led to both high food waste and a worse experience. You might have noticed that this sounds very similar to what we have already in this box down here, and I don't think we need both. Of the two, I like this bottom one better, so I'm going to select the text by hitting Control A, then Control C for copy, and then go right up here, and then right click and go to paste, then over to this option that says paste this text. That way I don't have to worry about formatting. Then I can just delete this box down here. Now, I mentioned earlier that you want to guide your audience visually, and part of this includes directing their attention to the highest level ideas first, and then to the details. The idea behind this is the pyramid principle, which I've explained in more detail in other videos, but basically it's a method of communication that involves starting with your main point, then working your way through the supporting details of that main point. The advantage to this approach is that it helps you communicate a lot of information in a way that's easy to understand and digest. The way we do that on a slide is by making sure the title captures the slide's primary takeaway and that it's the most attention-grabbing part of the slide so the audience looks there first. Take a look at this slide from BCG, for example. Notice how the title sticks out from the rest of the slide. It's bold, it's got a large font, and it has a dark green line underneath it. By reading the title first, the audience will understand the main takeaway for the slide. So when they get to the details in this chart and in these bullet points, they'll have some guidance and some context. So to maximize the clarity of our slide, I'm going to do the same thing here. We want the main idea on the top and then the supporting points beneath it. It looks like they've kind of done that by putting a short title on the top, then a more detailed subtitle just below it. Now, this is something I see quite a bit, and I think it accomplishes the goal of providing a summary of the slide. But the issue is the subtitle is really where the main takeaway is, and that doesn't grab that much attention. So what I'm going to do instead is move that text to the title and then just delete the subtitle. And obviously this is a bit too long, so I'm just going to cut out some unnecessary words. Then lastly, I'll drag this up to get rid of some of this white space, and there we go. Now we have a nice clear title that summarizes the slide really well. Alright, now that we've got the main message of the slide clearly in place, we can worry about the rest of the content on the slide, and this is where things get kind of tricky. There's a lot of text on the slide, so we need to find a way to naturally separate the different sections so they're easy to distinguish visually. The first thing I'm going to do is separate out these takeaways down at the bottom. They're obviously very important in helping to show the difference between 10 years ago and today, so I want to make sure they don't blend in too much with the rest of the text. Easiest way to do this is by holding the control key and selecting each of these boxes, then dragging the bottom part of the box up, and then I'm just going to duplicate them by holding down the control and shift keys and dragging them in a straight line down here. Then I'll just change the text to say what I want. and increase the font by hitting Control shift and the greater than sign, then bolding it by hitting Control b I can get rid of this text right here, and I'll move these icons to the side in case I want to use them later. Now onto the text. Notice how right now the text is all the same color, and at first glance it sort of blends together. So to make it a little easier to process, I'm going to first change the main text to black. I'm also going to make sure these bullet points are black as well, and I can change both these things pretty quickly just by using my ribbon shortcuts. By the way, if ribbon shortcuts like this are new to you, or if your PowerPoint skills could use an upgrade, make sure you check out some of our other resources on PowerPoint. We've got some free videos here on YouTube, a very popular PowerPoint shortcuts cheat sheet, and full courses that provide advanced PowerPoint training for consulting, strategy, and finance professionals. So if you're interested, check out some of the links in the description. Another thing I'm going to do to separate these labels from the main part of the text just a little bit better is I'm going to increase the text size. And I'm also going to add lines underneath these top two. 
A neat trick here is when you're adding a new line, hold the shift key and the line will be perfectly straight every single time. And then I'll just delete this line because I think it's now a little bit distracting. And for good measure, I'll also increase the font size for some of this other text as well, just to make it a little bit more readable. The takeaways down at the bottom feel separated from the main text, but I think we can do a little bit better. First of all, I want to align them better, and I can do that by selecting each of these and going up to the Align Text menu in the ribbon and selecting Middle. And I think I'm also going to try and use these icons because they do a good job of providing a visual cue for which approach is better. So first I'll adjust the margins of this text box and move the text over. And I can do that by again using the ribbon shortcut to get into the Format Shape menu and changing this left margin. Then I'll just drag these over and make them a little bigger. Then I think we can take it one step further by putting a shaded box behind the text to make it pop just a tiny bit more. So I'll put the box where I want it, use my ribbon shortcuts to change the color, and then send it to the back. Another critical part of formatting is you want to continue to draw attention to what matters. We've already done that with the title at the top and these key takeaways down here, but you can also bold the keywords on the slide to make skimming the content just a little bit easier. Not everyone likes to do this, but I think it adds a nice touch. And it's going to be hard to notice much of a difference because we've already been looking at this slide for so long. But for someone looking at this slide for the very first time, bolding keywords like this can make a big difference. Now just a few more finishing touches to help with the spacing on the slide and the overall look and feel. All right, there we go. So as we compare the slide with the original, you can see that it looks quite a bit different. The slide might not be the best looking slide out there, but anyone who looks at this slide is going to have a significantly easier time processing the details and understanding the main takeaway. And ultimately, that's your main goal. We didn't really change any of the content on the slide or remove any of the information. We just reformatted it in a way that's more natural for a first time viewer. All right, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you found it helpful. If you're interested in learning how to design and structure slides for executive audiences, make sure you check out our courses for individuals and for teams over at theanalystacademy.com. Or if you're looking for courses on how to significantly improve your PowerPoint speed and efficiency, we've got that as well. Thanks again for watching and hope to see you soon. Mm. I forgot how good these are.